Hello there, and welcome to this video highlighting one of the new features or enhancements to the Cisco Secure Firewall. This is one in a series of videos created to discuss and demonstrate the latest updates within the 6.7 release of software. In this video, I'll talk about and show you some of our upgrade enhancements. First off, I want to talk about compatibility checks. These are performed before an upgrade can begin, and also before, and separate to, the upgrade readiness checks, which I'll cover later. Compatibility checks will not permit an upgrade to proceed if the FXOS version on the Firepower 9300 or 4100 series appliances is not compatible with the target FTD version, if there's a deployment pending to a device that you're attempting to upgrade to perform an upgrade on, or if there are weak ciphers in use within the configuration. The compatibility checks are designed to reduce the chances of issues during upgrades and the amount of effort required in order to resolve any issues. Compatibility data will be retrieved from the FMC and used to inform users of potential issues. For FXOS validation, version information from the FTD on the security modules is populated into the FMC via a heartbeat mechanism. Before I go into a demo showing some of these enhancements, I wanted to take you through some of the components here to give you a full picture of what's included. Here, you can see an example of the FXOS compatibility check failing on a Firepower 4100 series device. In this case, the FXOS version would need to be upgraded before upgrading the FTD version. And here, we see the compatibility check failing due to weak ciphers in a site-to-site -site VPN that is in use. The recommendation here is to reconfigure the VPN to use more secure ciphers. Upgrade readiness checks are another enhancement we've made. Here, we have improved the performance of the checks, added support for HA and clusters, as well as provided a whole host of informational and visualization updates. Once the basic compatibility checks have taken place, the new readiness checks will provide a tool allowing users to detect possible upgrade problems before they are attempted, reducing time and effort in resolving issues should they occur during the upgrade process. This feature provides new status columns within the FMC user interface, consolidated views for readiness checks, and downloadable results via the task manager. Here you can see an example of the new readiness checks tab under the product updates window which provides a consolidated view of all the readiness checks that have been run. Device upgrade enhancements is all about enhanced status reporting. We've also added recovery options should upgrades fail, along with multiple locations and visualizations to see what is happening during an upgrade. The main driver behind this is to provide information to users in a way that suits them and to give users an automated way to recover from potential problems, further reducing administration overheads. To do this, we've provided an option to manually or automatically cancel an upgrade due to failure, along with the option of rolling back to the previous version, as well as interactive ways to monitor the whole upgrade process. Let's take a look at the demo. In this demo, I'll perform an upgrade on an FTD device running software version 6.6.1, taking it to version 6.7. We start by navigating to Configuration and Updates. And here we see that the 6.7 upgrade package is ready to be deployed from our centralized management platform, the FMC. We can also see the new Readiness Checks tab that provides a consolidated view of all the readiness checks that have been run. This is empty at present as this is the first one run on this FMC. Moving back to the Available Updates tab, we have the choice of staging an update to a device in order to perform the upgrade at a later time, or we have the option to upgrade directly from the FMC. For this demo, we'll go straight from the FMC. The first thing we notice is that the new device compatibility check has warned us that the device configurations are out of date, meaning that we probably have a deployment pending against our device. So let's go ahead and deploy that policy first. Jumping into deployment, we can deploy the policy to the target FDD device, and then once completed, we can return to the product update screen. Here we can click to install the upgrade directly from the FMC once again, and now we see that the compatibility check has passed, and that we can now proceed with the readiness check. Making sure we select our target device, 
We click on the check readiness button to begin the process. From here, we can now monitor the check in real time via the tasks view. Coming back to the product update screen also shows us that the readiness check is underway. Back into the tasks view, we can see the stage of the check and which script is being run until we receive the final go ahead message telling us that we're OK to upgrade to the 6.7 release for this managed device. Before we launch the upgrade, you can see here the automatic recovery option. Leaving this checkbox ticked allows the system to automatically cancel the upgrade if there's an issue and then return the target device back to its previous version of software. So now let's upgrade our target device. We click on install and acknowledge the confirmation window. Now it's all about monitoring the device configuration upgrade. So we get the notification telling us to mon we can monitor this from the notification center. So let's take a look there first. On the tasks tab, we can see that the remote install is initializing and we can view the details from here as well. We've got a, a hyperlink there that we can check on. And this is one of the new visualizations that we talked about earlier on in this session. So here we can see that the upgrade is in progress. Coming off there and checking our device management tab, we can also see that we have an upgrade tab on here now, which is new to the 6.7 release. And this shows us all the devices that might be going under an upgrade. If we click over here in the upgrade status column, that also takes us to that visualization that shows us the upgrade process in terms of the device, what version, how long it's expected to take, and what percentage complete we're at. So as you can see here, we're at 10% completed, and there's about 14 minutes left of this overall process. The upgrade is in progress, and we can also see which script is being run at this point in time. Because we left the checkbox enabled for the automatic recovery, you can see here that the upgrade will automatically cancel on failure and roll back to the previous version. We also have the, the ability to check logs in real time as well. Again, showing us exactly which stage the upgrade is at uh, and which script is being run. If we want to, we can take a copy of this log information to the clipboard and paste that into, into another tool for later viewing. We also have the option to cancel the upgrade manually at this stage if we want to as well. But we're going to leave it to run and I'm going to because I want to show you what happens as we go through. So let's close this box now. So back into the product update screen. And again, if we come back into our notifications and look at the tasks tab, again, we can see here that the, the, the remote install is taking place. We can see in this view as well at what stage it's at in terms of how much is done, how long is left and which script is, is running at this particular point in time. So you can see we've updated the status information as, as to the progress at multiple points. Clicking back into here, we can see here that there's about 19% completed and we have about approximately 12 minutes left of the process. Coming back to the process 11 minutes later, we can see here that we've got a minute left. We've got much more in, the in terms of logs that are available. And we can see actually now that the, the upgrade is almost finished because the, uh, the last, last action on here is to actually reboot the target device, which is happening now. So once the device is rebooted, we can see here that that upgrade is completed and the visualization tells us that we've successfully upgraded from version 6.61 to version 6.7. The final step as part of any upgrade pod procedure is to go to our deployments page and to redeploy the security policy that we have for this device. So deploying this, pol this policy and committing that down to the target device completes the upgrade procedure. So all we have to do now is wait for our policy to deploy and once that's completed, the upgrade process is complete. Thank you for taking the time to watch this update video. There is more content available covering the other new features in the 6.7 release, as well as new content covering topics associated with the Cisco Secure Firewall. 
As always, we recommend that you read the release notes for each new release along with the configuration guides to get more information on the topics highlighted in these videos. Hope to see you again soon.